Hey, I wanted to talk to you about the idea that I've come to phrase as whatever you put under the microscope fills your whole field of vision. So you can imagine that even a little microscopic thing, a tiny thing that you put under that lens and you stick your eyeball there and you look into it, all you see is that. And there could be a million bigger things all around you, but what you see, all you see is what's under the microscope. So we, this is just such a good metaphor for life, and I'm going to apply it here to relationship, but you can apply, I'm going to apply it to romantic relationship or primary relationship, but you can apply it everywhere. Uh, you can apply it in terms of how hopeful you feel about the world situation, or you can apply it to all kinds of relationships. You can apply it to your job satisfaction. You can apply it to anything, to your self-esteem, to your to how you hold yourself in esteem. So let's just start there and go to relationship from there, because I'm going to. Of course, what sets up the primary relationship in adulthood and our whole dating life is what happens in childhood and, and a lot of what plays out between us and our parents. And so if you think of the kid who's told uh, what a loser they are, what a fuck up they are, what you know, what, what they're doing that's not okay or that they're not good at or don't mess that, that up again or whatever, and then here, small child, take this full bowl of water and carry it across the room without spilling it, and and so the child is going to like be so onto like everything that's wrong with them and what they can't do and what the people around them think of them, there's no way they're going to get across that floor without spilling the water. So um, so I want to invite you to how you look at, think about, and relate with the people that you're in primary relationship with. Uh, so go to the lover partner uh, domain. And no, think of the times, or sometimes it's all the time, sometimes you've fallen into an era where this is your reality, when you are focused on or constantly aware of what's not satisfying, what you don't like, or how people like to phrase it is what makes you crazy, you know, and which is an interesting phrasing because you're really giving them the possibility or the responsibility of, of determining how sane you are, which is in fact 100% yours to determine. So, so what we do then, and this is how we keep ourselves sometimes trapped in stay or go decisions, which are useless uh, and don't help clarity, certainly are not conducive to love, certainly do not allow you to show up as your best self in the moment as things are now, which is all we can ever do in life, in any realm of life. How much can you be present? to the reality as it is right now, as you being who you are to date and based on what's happening right now, how present can you be being okay with what is or what Abraham Hicks called satisfied with what is and eager for more. And I have a vision that it would be more this or less that or that uh, or whatever. So um, when your focus is day in and day out, moment to moment, now and now and now, on what you don't like, on what's missing, on what's lacking, on what's not enough, on where you disrespect your partner or you're not sure about them. If you keep that shit under the microscope, that's the vision you've got. That's it. That's all you get to see. And like the child in my anecdote at the beginning of this, as you lay that gaze upon them and then the, the irritations and the body language and the speech and the tone that goes with it, you're not inviting them to show up as their best and most capable. In fact, you're expecting them to disappoint you, to bring the worst they've got. And you are messing up the whole thing. You are creating it if you walk around mulling it over, thinking about it, telling about it, narrating the story again and again, you're setting that up. Now, I'm not saying they're not who they are. I'm not saying they're not doing something that may be wrong or unacceptable. I'm saying you choose. Here's where you have agency. Go where you have agency, not where you don't. Leave them to do their work or not. Leave them to deal with their moods, their problems, their whatevers. Release them to their journey. Let them be on a human journey. Now, what's yours? Yours is, if you're still here today, if you choose to be here today and you're not actually packing your bags and going, 
put the good stuff under the microscope. Just do. Just if there's one thing you like about them or admire or enjoy or think is fun or funny or lovely or beautiful, go there and drop the but. There's also that. Of course. Of course there is. We do this to ourselves too. Uh, oh yeah, I'm great at that, but I'm still working on just, could you just put the good stuff under the microscope? Because when you do that, your whole field of vision is filled with good stuff and then you feel better. And then you are emitting more love and kindness and acceptance and letting things flow and, and roll off. Uh, and you are inviting the others around you, so your primary partner, to show up as their best self. And if they don't, and if you find it's unacceptable to you, and if you're putting the good stuff under the microscope and things don't feel good anyway, or you keep bumping into what feels bad, even as you consciously maybe question your thoughts, maybe take care of uh, the pain, and maybe set up more boundaries, maybe uh, any number of ways you can respond to be proactive to be taking care of yourself and you know sometimes it means more distance more boundaries okay I'm gonna focus on myself for a while or I'm gonna give my attention to what makes me happy and right now that doesn't seem to be much about you fine good but put the good stuff under the microscope even if there's very little see if it's growing watch it grow or see if it's just feeling better more often which doesn't mean you have to stay that could be a leaving um, it's a sort of a jumping off place that feels better than I am so miserable and you've made me crazy and you've made me miserable and now it's your fault that I have to go and fuck you. It could just be as I keep choosing into what feels good and as I keep looking at everything I love about you, I'm left with the understanding that we're done and I bless you and I bless what we've done together. But another way it could go is that as you put the good stuff under the microscope, there's more good stuff. That's the most basic tenet of law of attraction that I have found once I started experimenting with it actually works. And that still doesn't mean you stay. But if there's a lot there and there's enough there and there's uh, that potential that's actually being lived into even a little, then the momentum can grow and transformation can happen and the quantum leaps can come in. But don't force anything, don't require anything. Do your work, do your part. Put the good stuff under the microscope and take care of yourself.